once again at the restaurant supply store picking up some pasta and some cheese sauce mix. I like the dry cheese sauce, okay? Alright, so let's get those in there. And we'll start a timer. Going for six minutes. It says nine to 11, but I want them slightly underdone. So there's six minutes. I'll check it, see if I need to give it a couple more. Mm. Yep, need a little bit more. Okay, giving it two more. So that'll be eight. And it says 9 to 11, and I don't want it to, to be even all the way 100% cooked. I just want it to be close, so that when you add boiling water later, it'll finish it that last little bit without overdoing it. Yeah, that looks good. Yep, so let's get those out of there. I want to get them out quickly and get them rinsed in cool water. Stop that cooking. I rinsed the pasta in cold water to stop the cooking and to rinse off some of the extra starch. I'm going to put just a touch of olive oil in here and I'm going to put this in there. Hopefully it fits well in this one. I don't remember how big this one is. Okay, that's not a problem. And then I want to make sure I end up with at least 12 pounds so we have a little bit for dinner. And I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on that and then I'm going to stir that up extensively to make sure that the pasta doesn't end up sticking. So just going to chop some onion to go with it and you can chop them any way you want, any size you want. Okay so I'll do all three onions and those will go in it. Okay, so I heated a little bit of butter in the pan, a tablespoon. I've got a little over a pound of onion. Uh, it ended up being 17 ounces, so that's what we had. That's what we're using for this. I'm going to just saute them until they're kind of translucent. Don't want to brown them or anything. So we'll get those started. And I'm also going to add salt and pepper to those early on in the process. And I'm not worried about giving a little bit extra because I haven't added any salt and pepper to the rest of the batch yet. I'll add a little to the beef, but it's going to need a decent amount. And because I'm going to be putting this in with the pasta after it's been cooked, the beef has already been cooked, everything is cooked, and I'm not going to be cooking it as a whole dish before I freeze dry it. I do want to get the onions a little more cooked than I probably would otherwise. Okay, so got the onions tossed in there. Now we'll get the those mixed, add the pasta. So we get three pounds of the ground beef, the coarse ground beef that we ground, the home grind stuff. And what else do we need? We need the pasta and the sauce, and that's it. I'm going to add the pasta and toss it around. Or maybe I'll add that and then get the sauce first before I toss it around so I don't have to keep pushing on the pastas because I don't want to break them up. Oh, they seem to be holding up extremely well. Okay, get the other bowl. Now we just need the sauce, the cheese sauce on there. So we'll get that ready. So this is the cheese sauce we're using. Uh, I know a lot of people like to made, make their homemade cheese sauce uh, using fresh cheese and all that. Well, I really, really like powdered cheese sauces. I don't care usually for homemade cheese sauces. They're so tough to do. Uh, we have to worry about them breaking. So I'm going to just use some of this. So this will make over a gallon. It makes a gallon and a quarter, I think, if you mix the whole thing. 
So we'll mix up the amount that will fit in there. And we're not going to cook the whole pasta thing together. We're just mixing it enough to wet it all up. So got cool water. I'll mix in the cheese sauce and then bring it to a boil. So putting it in there while it's cool. And then I'll bring it up to temperature. So they're supposed to just whisk it all together. That way, if I need more, I can just simply mix up more. I'll probably need double this for this size batch. Rubber spatula. And we'll take some of this sauce. And we'll... Let me just get to pour this all in there. Get that extra saucy. Oh, give that a little bit of a stir. And then add the other part. Okay, so pour the rest of the pasta in there. Five cups of sauce over the top. And then we'll be mixing it around. Okay. Okay. And then just give that a stir. Make sure I get it mix from top to bottom so oh, then we'll get that panned in uh, one pounds in each pan and we'll have a couple of and we'll have a couple of pans with dividers in it for a half pound on each side so I can get the whole 10 pounds on a cookie or on the freeze dryer trays and you can adjust the salt and pepper to taste and any other spices in there got our Pans for pre pre for pre freezing. Just give it a teeny bit of um, cooking uh, non-stick cooking spray so that they'll pop out better afterwards. I need one pound, so tear out the scale. All right, so just put a pound in each. Kind of spread them down and flatten them out a bit. And then we've got the two with the dividers. And same kind of thing, just a little bit of the cooking, non-stick cooking spray. And on the divider. We need half a pound or eight ounces on each side. Smooth those down, keeping the divider in the middle as it's finished. All right, so those go in the freezer for pre-freezing and they'll be ready for the freeze dryer. It's late on May 27th. Gonna get the next batch in there real quick so that it's still the May, tw uh, so it's still May 27th. I've got um, a batch for May 27th, 29th, 31st, and then we're back to the even days for the rest of the series. So I've got the food that was pre-freezing. I'm going to grab a pair of gloves because this frozen stuff tends to be cold. I've got tray one. So this time it's a pasta dish, kind of like a homemade... Um, Kind of like a homemade hamburger helper. Oh, I guess on the video I just saw it made. So never mind, you know what it is because you just saw it. So get it out of the pans and onto the trays. And each one of these was a pound. So if it doesn't work out to two and a half pounds, it's because I already lost a little bit of weight in the freezer. And then the little half pans. All right, so tray one, and then tray two. Now grab that other half pan, get that one out of there. And the other half. And I don't always take the 
pans of stuff and pop them out and put them directly on these trays. Usually I've got quite a few ahead and so I pop them out and put them in a Ziploc and wait their turn for the freeze dryer. Um, I've had many dozens of those cubes sitting in the freezer waiting for their turn. We can get 10 of the pans in a freeze dryer load. Um, we've had times where we've had maybe a hundred of those cubes waiting in there or more, plus other bags of things. So I'm going to put a thermometer in each one of these and I need to get it that far in. Let's see how that works. Let's get them moved over and get them in. As I mentioned before, I wasn't going to stop the freeze dryer after the last batch and before this one because uh, there was so little water in it, there just wasn't a need for it. So it's still running and I'm going to put the food in and then I'm going to stop it, restart it, uh, so that it goes right back onto the next cycle. So let's get the food in there and then we'll do the controls. Okay. And it's definitely quite cold in there. So tray four on the bottom. And working our way up, tray three. Yeah. And the, these are still about 10 degrees in there. Uh, so the food stayed nice and cold. And it's going to take a little bit to for that fog to go away because opening it when it was that cold. Yeehaw. This whole time the machine's just been running as if it's waiting for your decision of uh, no, uh, no defrost or, or more time, or defrost. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is sell it no defrost, and then immediately get it restarted. Okay. It's showing negative 29, and it's actually probably colder than that, uh, but I just put the cold, the relatively warm food in there. Okay, it's certainly not going to need the whole six hours of freeze time because it's very cold in there already, and the food is frozen. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten it another hour. Oops. So go for five hours and even that is probably overkill. So even a five hour freeze time for this is probably overkill uh, because it hasn't been off. So it's the barrel is still at least 40 degrees below zero. Um, it's really cold in there. I've put the frozen food in there in the cold barrel. It's not going to really take that long. However, it's also almost uh, midnight, but I made it today, and today being the 20, May 27th, and so it won't hurt to have it freeze that long. Um, if I'm still awake another hour, I'll check it, see how well it's cooling. I may take off another hour or so, because uh, that's probably going to be more than necessary. The freeze dryer finished uh, just a few minutes ago, so the trays are still warm. Um, they haven't had a chance to really get cold, so I'm going to take them out and weigh them and then put them back in for that last couple of hours to double check to make sure that they're already dry. I'd already added three hours last night before I went to bed because it was on final dry and it was going to get done about three hours before I got up. So. I added the three hours, it made it through, it stopped before I came down, but because the thermometers are in there, I know that the trays are still warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. So get the drain valve open. So tray one, okay, and I'm going to rotate them 
So tray four, I'll put tray four on the top when I put it back in. And that's 1101. Take tray one and put it on the bottom. Okay, tray two. Tray two is 1106. It's exactly the same as tray one was. Oh, and I'm gonna switch it also. Rotate them. And 1095. Okay, and then I'll rotate these up. Three will go up. And two will go down. So now one through four from bottom to top. All right, and they are starting to cool, but that's fine. So now I'll get the drain valve closed. Okay, drain valve closed. So I'm gonna add more time. It is closed. And it's cooling, so that means it's been, uh, that it stopped almost 45 minutes ago. Okay, and so it's restarted. Got it for two hours. We'll come back and check it. Um, it had been off for almost 45 minutes. The trays were about 60 degrees still. It's a little colder than I would want to take them out and bag them, but it, yeah, I would rewarm them even if it were 60 degrees. I'd rewarm them before I took them out to bag them. I like to have them closer to 100 so that uh, there's no chance of condensation on them. Okay, so we'll come back and check them in a little while been a little over two hours and now we're going to take it out. I'm pretty sure it was already dry. If it hasn't lost any weight then we know it was dry before the reed dry or before this extra time. So let's get them out and check them. I need to down arrow past the rest of that. Okay, I'm going to turn off a couple other things to make it a little bit quieter. Before I forget, see if we can see that through the hose, yeah. You can see it's still pretty clean. It's been 13 batches now since I changed the filters. I'm going to be doing it again pretty soon. But uh, considering it's full load batches, that's pretty good with the standard pump. Now, get the drain valve open. And get those out and check. Okay, so starting with tray one, it was 1106. And it's 1105, okay. So if, it's, if that's the worst of them, I'll probably take them out. So tray two, tray two. Also 1105, now to 11, uh, was 116. Tray three. Eleven ninety four bouncing to eleven ninety five. Okay, so it's bouncing to eleven ninety five or ten ninety five, which is what it was before. So it's bouncing between ten ninety four and ten ninety five. So less than one gram. So let's check tray four. It's the most likely to have had an issue, and it's still eleven oh one. So I'm good with that. Okay, so. I'll go ahead and press no defrost. Make it much, much quieter in here. Jeez, always feels like I'm yelling. And then I turn that off and then I really notice it. All right, so get my little defrost baffle in there. Okay, so I'll turn this on. It'll add a little bit of sound here, but not too terrible. So roll this over. We'll get all the thermometers out and then we'll get them weighed to calculate the current weight. 
So our homemade hamburger helper is out. Got the thermometers out. We'll get them weighed and then calculate how much uh, per pound and then figure out how to bag them. Uh, part of it will depend if they fall apart well or not. If they're really stuck as a lump, I'll go with a bigger bag so I don't have to break the pieces. So we'll find out. And then we're calling this 20 servings, 8 ounce servings. Uh, so a pretty decent serving, but not huge. So we'll be bagging them in one serving and two serving bags, probably. Let's get it started, find out. All right, so starting at the beginning, tray one. So now it's 10.95. And tray two. And 10.90, it's bouncing between 90 and 91. I'll go 91. So I've got the numbers. I'll get the math done. Come right back. Don't go away. So this is going to be the first bagging test. So single serving was eight ounces, which is one of the small pieces. And it needs a 158 grams of water to get it back to where it was. So I'm trying that in one of the quart bags to see how it'll fit and to see if these crumble apart at all. So let's see if it's going to fit in there and how much will fit. I don't think a two serving is going to fit in here because the pasta is so big and, and not compressible. So we'll find out. Might have to use two quart bags for all the two servings and more. Okay, on this, to make sure that I keep everything separate, I'm going to take that portion and move it over so I don't lose any of the components. That's going to fit easily. So now we'll find out if they break apart. Oh yeah, it just comes right apart. So it'll be easy. So there's, they're not stuck. Okay, so this is crumbling apart nicely. There's nothing stuck. All right, well, let's see what that looks like what's in it when it's in there. And I really don't need to use the scale on this because I have them portioned out into one pound increments and um, half pounds. So the scale is not really needed for this one. All right. So the one serving fits in there really easily. I might be able to get two servings. I'll give it a little shake, find out if it looks like it will. I'm pretty sure it would. The one serving works well. I'll label some bags for one servings and we'll be right back. So oh, I'm going to check to see if two servings will fit in a bag. I'm going to go ahead and take one of these off of here. I'm separating it off so that it doesn't get mixed in. I'll just set that aside for right now and work with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of break up the pieces. So I'm very gently, because I don't want to crush any of the pieces. I just want to break them apart again. Okay, so let's see if that will fit in there. Looks like it's going to be a tight fit, but I'll shake it down, see if we can make it work. All right, that's awfully full. I'm going to give it a big shake. Okay, that's tight. That's really, really tight. So I'm going to leave this one in here because I've got it labeled. And I can get it closed, but that's really bulgy and tight. So I'm not going to do any more of them in that size for the two servings. So the two servings, I'll go up to the two quart bag and I'll do some two servings, maybe some threes and fours even. So I'll put the rest in two quart bags. And the two quart bags will hold probably up to four servings. So I'll do some of them as two servings and some of them as four. So I certainly won't have to crumble them very much because there's going to be plenty of room in these. All right, so two servings fits in there quite easily. Whoa. So now I've got a couple of the bags for four servings. I'm going to kind of crumble these up to make sure that they're going to fit as well as possible. So again, I'm 
just breaking apart the components. I'm, I'm being careful not to break the pasta or pieces of onion or anything. I don't want to crush any of this. I just want to loosen them so that they'll fit in the bag easier. So they'll pour in there, fill in all the little spaces. Okay. All right. So that all needs to go into this bag. Oh. We'll shake it down, we'll make it fit. All right, that still leaves it low enough to be able to easily seal with four servings. Got that bagged in five two-quart bags and five one-quart bags in one serving, two servings, and four servings. So the two quart bags, I'm using 500 cc oxygen absorbers because that's what I got for these. And because this pasta stuff has so much air between all the pieces, it is still mostly air in these bags. All right. So you know, just drop one in each bag and then zipper them shut. And I'm kind of pushing out any, I don't know if you can see that, trying to push out any extra air I can. These would be another good example that a, where a vacuum chamber type sealer would probably be great. Because so much air, especially with the two serving bags. Well, you can see even with the four serving bags, there's this much space at the top uh, that is able to push the air out. And with the two servings bags, it's not much more than half full. So by pushing out that extra air, I get rid of a lot of oxygen to start with. Then the oxygen absorber won't have to work as hard or will last a longer time. And with the quart bags, I'm using the 300 cc oxygen absorbers. And this particular bag still has five in it, so I'll be able to use this one up. Okay, again, squishing out any extra air. And zippering them shut. And this last one, this is the one that's two servings in the little bag, so it's a tougher fit. There's no extra air for me to push out. All right, you can see that's a very full bag. All right, I get these sealed, and I find with mine, the bigger bag tends to be, the, the top edge sometimes tends to be a little more wavy, so I really make sure that I've got it nice and smooth across this sealer area. So no wrinkles, hold it into place, sealing it as high up on the bag as I can. So I leave myself room for more space. I don't know if it's necessary, but I like to do the first bag in a series of bags twice to make sure that it's really up to temperature. Because this thing is a big chunk of metal and it really soaks the heat away. Okay, that's a really nice smooth seal. No problems with it. If it had a wrinkle, a crease or something, then I could seal it again below that. I've got room for a couple more. Okay, so we'll get the rest of them. Make sure that they're nice and smooth. All right, and that the littler bags, they seem to be a little less wrinkly. Last thing before I put them in the tubs is I'm going to add the gross weight to the bottom of each bag. So I've got the gross weight on the bottom of the bag in case I ever have a problem with the seal or with moisture getting into the bag I'll know if there's a failure. So I'll get those labeled and get them moved over to the tubs. The power usage on that pasta dish was 26.13 kilowatt hours. 
I'll reset it for the next batch. And so it'll be ready to go. The hamburger helper type pasta meal is done and bagged. It's in five two quart bags and five one quart bags. I'm going to see if they'll all fit in bin three. I'll put those on my list and which will update the computer. And so we'll know where to find them. Let's get them in the bin. Bin three still has some space. So we'll find out if it's enough. I'm going to start with the little one serving ones and kind of tuck those in as far as I can. Oh, that one's a two serving one, a big fluffy bag. Okay. And then I'm going to check test fit that. Okay. Not hitting. And then we'll see if we can get the rest of those in there. Okay. It looks like it might make it. This four serving one has a little bit more height. Better find a kind of a hole for it. There, that makes it. Okay, that's good. Another four serving one. Kind of nestle that down in there. And the last two serving one. That looks like it made it. Let's check it. Okay, it fits without squishing it up. So that fits. So those are in there. I'll add that to the list that these are in bin three. And next batch, we'll move on to bin four. The 20 servings of pasta are stored away in bin three now. We have one serving bags, two serving bags, and four serving bags. So I can make any combination I want and take out the size that I want. One of the things that I didn't do on this batch was add any of the instant clear gel. The cheese sauce that I use has tapioca flour as the thickener. The chart that I can find says that that sauce should be good for freezing. If it's not thick when we go to use it, we'll just add some instant clear gel at that time. I wasn't sure if I should add it or not. I looked at the information that I had and it says that that kind of thickener should be okay for freezing. I've never tried it, so I don't really know. Um, but if it's too thin, that's fine. One of the things that I would probably do if I make this again, I would add some nacho cheese sauce uh, as part of the cheese to spice it up a bit. It's a little more bland than I would have liked. Uh, it's pretty good. It's as good as any hamburger helper I've had, but I would like to have had it a little bit spicier. So maybe some nacho cheese sauce, maybe even a little bit of chopped jalapenos or something to a little spice it up a little bit. Anyway, it's pretty good. It's done, it's bagged away. We're getting the machine defrosted for the next batch. Should be in an hour or two, or a few hours probably, because I won't get around to it. Uh, the next batch is back to the top of the list is meat. So we've gone through the list three times now, from top to bottom, from the meats all the way down to finished meals. We have three full bins of them. I did have to adjust which bags and which bins because the one was a little over full because of the size of the bags. But anyway, so, so far, I like the idea. You've got a bin that has six different types of things in it, from meats, vegetables, fruits, so on, uh, through to ready to eat or ready to rehydrate meals. One tub, we've got quite a few meals in there or quite a few bags of food in there. We'll move on to bin four next time.